nearly half a million illegal aliens, an increase of nearly 22 percent compared to the same time last year. Now, unfortunately, the GOP seems to be the only party caring enough to do anything about it. Speaker McCarthy held a border press conference yesterday, and Republicans on the House Judiciary are set to hold a hearing on the crisis next week in Yuma, Arizona. But in case you're wondering, every Democrat in the House is boycotting the hearing, calling it a stunt. They claim that they didn't get proper notice despite getting wind of it in a formal invitation three weeks ago. It's safe to say we can go ahead and add the border to the Democrats' burn book. But if you're going to boycott everything that defines our country, why not go ahead and boycott it all together? Go live in Europe, because that's that's their end goal for this country anyway. Joining me now is Republican Congressman from the great state of Georgia, Buddy Carter. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us tonight. You know, a, a lot of your colleagues have been down to the border multiple times during this administration to call attention to the crisis. And I found it very interest interesting that the speaker was down down there yesterday. Uh, and just today, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, along uh, with another one of your colleagues, Henry Quaylar, visited the border. Uh, why do you think suddenly they're, they're taking an interest when they really had no interest in, in going down there before? Well, I think it has to do with public outcry. I mean, let's face it, we are, are the Biden administration, by ignoring the border and by having an insecure border, is really jeopardizing national security. Just in the first fiscal year, we've, uh, in the first quarter of this fiscal year of 23, we've already had over 53 people who are on the terrorist watch list that we've called coming across that border, 15 in the month of January coming across that border. We've had 4.6 million illegal crossings, according to the Customs and Border Patrol, during the Biden administration. Over 1.2 have been apprehended, 1.2 million. I mean, it's totally out of control. As a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, we were down there on Wednesday. We had a, a joint subcommittee hearing between the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee and the Health sub Subcommittee to talk about the public health crisis that the border is, is currently causing here in this country. And it is a public health crisis because we have nothing short of an epidemic of fentanyl poisoning in this country, killing 200 people every day, 200 of our citizens. Can you imagine if we had an airplane crash to kill 200 people, we would stop all flights immediately and we would be walking. But here we have 200 people dying as a result of fentanyl poisoning. Much of this is coming across the border, across the southwest border, and this administration doing nothing, absolutely nothing about it. And, you know, it's a great point that you mentioned because Speaker McCarthy put fentanyl front and center yesterday uh, when he was at the border. Take a listen to this. Today, more than 300 Americans will be poisoned and died from fentanyl. You're looking at a place that much of it comes through. Tomorrow, there'll be 300 more. That's the equivalent of an airline crashing. If an airline crashed in America every single day, by the third day, the entire nation would wake up and say, we need to fix the problem. Well, I promise you this, the new majority in Congress, we're going to fight to fix this problem. And, you know, Congressman, it was so interesting that today House Minority Leader uh, Hakeem Jeffries said, you know, we need a congressional solution to what's happening at the border. But I'm curious, behind the scenes and the conversations that you're having, uh, are Democrats and Republicans on the same page as to what those solutions look like? Some of the Democrats are, very few of them, but there are some who get it. Henry Cuellar is one. He is a, uh, he has a, 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 his district is at the border. He understands the problem. He sees it firsthand. There are a few others, but for the most part, they all want to ignore it. And it baffles me as to why. Again, just as the speaker said, 200, 300 people dying every day as a result of this. And let me tell you, this is not addiction. This is, you know, we did have three Democrats, to their credit, who came with us to the field hearing in, in Texas, in McAllen, and we appreciate them going. And they, they wanted to point out, oh, most of the fentanyl that is seized is seized at points of entry. They are correct, and I will acknowledge that they are correct. 97% of the fentanyl that is seized is seized at the point of entry. However, we are only catching 5 to 10% of the fentanyl that's coming across that border. So 97% of 10% of the total, that's a minuscule number. 
Well, I have to give so much credit to you and your colleagues for, for the constant attention that you've drawn to the situation at the border, because we weren't seeing Democrats listening at all, and at least now we're starting to see some realize the, the problems that this is causing. And obviously, every state being a border state now, with that fentanyl uh, making its way to, to all 50 states. Congressman, before we let you go, uh, Kevin McCarthy's promised hearings to get to the bottom of DirecTV's censoring of Newsmax. Uh, just curious, what questions would you want answered? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Uh, you know, as a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, this is under our jurisdiction, and certainly we want to get to the bottom of this. We don't want to get into any kind of uh, private business dealings. That's between two companies. But at the same time, it sure does raise a lot of red flags whenever you see conservative voices being suppressed. At, at the expense of, of, of not being able to be on a channel and not being able to be on a network. You see, all you got to do is compare apples and apples here. How many, how many liberal stations are, do you have on your, on, on your uh, TV here? And then how many conservative stations do you have? That, that's just apples and apples there. And when you see this yeah. consistent uh, censoring, if you will, of conservative stations, well, it certainly does raise a lot of red flags. Well, we appreciate you all looking into it. Congressman Buddy Carter, always great to see you. Thanks for being with us on this Friday night. Thank you.